Section 15.1, the concept of equilibrium. If you hear the word equilibrium, the word equal could come to your mind. And that could be helpful and it could be a little bit confusing. It depends on what is equal. In a, in a, in a reaction, most of the time, you're not going to have products just going to reactants and stopping. If you were to have a closed uh, closed uh, vessel, such as this tube in the picture, on the left you've got some gas in it, and it's closed, so it can't go away. So whatever products are made are going to be in that tube, and whatever reactants are still in that tube, it won't go away. So if you have a if you have a closed system, it's very possible that you're going to have a reversible reaction. So let's look at the look at any reaction where you have a left side and a right side the left side are reactants they react together to form products which we put on the right but if you have a closed vessel like this to where all of those products are trapped it's just as likely that those products could break apart back into the reactants so most chemical reactions don't go in one direction only they can go back and forth so the reactants can make products, then the products can either break apart or rejoin to make, to make reactants. Each of these are going to have a rate. So you would have a rate of going right and you would have a rate going left. Equilibrium has an idea that you will eventually stop making new products or, or stop making new reactants. There's going to be a, a place, a, a time, in which the reactants are being made at the same rate as the, the products are being made. And that is equilibrium. So the first thing in equilibrium is you're going to be thinking of equilibrium as equal rates. Okay, so reactants making products, okay, at same rate of products making reactants. So if you can think of products forming reactants as its own little chemical reaction, backwards reaction of reactants making products, then you're close to, to seeing what actually happens most of the time. So in this example, you've got um, the colorless gas, which is dinitrogen tetroxide, and it breaks apart at, uh, I think, 21 or so Celsius into two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide is not colorless, it's brown. So the warmer it gets, the more of the, of the uh, N2O4 breaks apart into two molecules of N2O2. Uh, what, what's happening as a result is that as it's breaking apart, it's going to start making more and more and more of the product. Well, the product itself can start joining together to make the reactant. So they can go back and forth. So if you think of the left making the right and the right joining together to make the left, there is a fight between production, okay? If I'm making peanut butter sandwiches and you're taking them apart as fast as I can make them, we'll never make any more sandwiches. Whatever, whatever the amount of sandwiches we made will be, will be fixed. So if the next one I make, you take it apart, and the next one I make, you take it apart, We're, we are fighting each other at the same rate, and that is what equilibrium is. So let's, let's kind of put this in a nutshell. It is going to be opposing, opposing reactions which occur or proceed at equal rates. That's what equilibrium. Here we have a graph that's showing that the pro the uh, forward reaction, which is which is reactants making products. Okay, these reactants are going away. You can see they're going away, and at the same time, products are being made. All right, so you're going to have a rate at which they're going away and a rate at which they're being produced. The rate at which they're produced could not, does, it's possible that it's different. Okay, let's look here. In the case of this example, you've got one molecule of this stuff breaking apart into two molecules of this stuff. So what happens is that, that the rate of, in this case, K sub R, is going to be a 
second order reaction. So it's going to be to, to the squared. So it's going to happen at twice the rate of, of the forward production. What's going to happen eventually, though, is that I'm making products. I'm making, I'm going left to right making products. And I'm making, uh, I'm taking products and, and going back to the left um, at a faster rate. So you're not going to, it's not going to be equal. You're not going to end up with the same amount of stuff made on both sides. You're probably going to have more reactants. Because if I can go from right to left faster than I can go from left to right, then I can end up making more of the reactants because I'm doing it faster than, than, than the left can go to the right. I'm going faster from right to left. So in this case, this is a, this is a steeper curve than this. This is going to the, to the right. This is going to the left. But eventually, they're going to stabilize where it does not matter how fast I can go. The left is making some products and the right is making some, some products and they're going to stabilize. So at stabilization, at this point called equilibrium, the concentrations of all of the stuff, whether it's reactants or products, is going to be constant. There's going to be a fixed. You're not going to make more left and you're not going to make more right. No more products made, no more reactants made. The, the, when you reach equilibrium, the amount of, of products made is going to be constant. It's going to be a fixed amount. So if you look here, since this one is steeper, I'm making, I'm making this much, making this much. But since that these are straight line curves, I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not making it faster or slower. I'm making the same amount in the same amount of time. I'm making the same amount in the same amount of time. So if I'm making if I'm making more reactants than I am making products, at the end of the time, when you put it in the test tube and then it stops making products, you've reached equilibrium. Now, how much products can you make? If you have a reversible reaction like this, you're not going to make 100% products. You're not going to make 100% NO2 because that NO2 itself can react as a reactant going the other way, and you'll end up like if you had all reactants, 100% reactants, 100% products, it's, and if you have, if this is twice as fast going left, okay, so I'm going twice as fast going left than one time going right, then you'll end up somewhere here where I'm making more products, I'm making more reactants at the end than I have products. And lots of chemical reactions are like this. So if you're a drug company and you're, you're making money, and you're ending up wasting most of your stuff because you're ending up making a little bit of product and a lot of reactant. Well, that's why you hire someone to kind of figure out a different way to do it. Maybe you can make more or less of what you don't want uh, by doing it a different way. And that's the, that's, the, that's the whole idea of trying to change things to your advantage. So if I consider this going in the right, okay, to the right, then I've got the N2O4 making two, one mole of N2O4 making two moles of NO2. Then my kinetics, if you remember kinetics from the last chapter, then the rate is going to be, we'll just call it, this, it's a rate constant, we'll call it F for forward, and it's going to be based upon, since this is the only stuff we have on the left, um, N2O4 concentration, the molarity of that, or the, in the case of a gas, it's not molarity, it's more like the gas pressure of that, raised to the one power. Since we have a, a implied one, this is raised to the one power. The rate going backwards, okay, this rate, the one with this arrow, is going to be, um, the rate is equal to K sub, um, uh, I guess we could call it backwards, I guess, so K sub reverse maybe, K sub R, and it's going to be equal to the concentration of the stuff you have, the NO2, but since there is a molar, uh, since there's two moles of this, it's going to be a second order re uh, reaction, so you're going to have to the second power. So you're going to have a forward rate and a, and a uh, backward rate, but equilibrium means these two rates are exactly the same. So K sub, uh, so K sub F 
times the N204 is going to equal the same rate as the case of R times the NO2 squared, okay? And if you were to, um, to, since they're both constants, this is a constant and this is a constant, you could get these on the same side, okay? You'd have to divide by here, okay? You'd have to divide by here, and you'll see that it's going to be K sub F over K sub R. Well, both of those are constants. They don't change. And since they don't change, this is going to be a constant called the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant is something you could figure out about any reversible reaction in which, since they're going both ways, you want to know where is it kind of going to equalize and stop making new stuff so that at least then you could find out how much stuff that you're going to make or make a good guess of it.